Hey everybody, I'm Kevin Hoy with The Future of Hunting and we got kind of a special show today. I'm here with Nathan Wallace Semp and we're going to talk about gun control or specifically uh, the gun injuries, the gun fatalities that are happening in this country. A lot of people, especially this day and age, are, are screaming for gun control. Nathan is a good friend of mine and a great guy. Uh, Nathan, you're, you're not a felon, you've never shot anybody. No, nope, right? never did that. Nope. Well, likewise, I don't have a criminal record and I've never shot anybody, but we've got two very different perspectives uh, on the issues of guns. So again, this is usually a very heated discussion. When most, most time when these two groups, the gun side and the anti-gun side get together, um, it doesn't take too long for arguments to happen. <laughs> but I picked Nathan specifically because I think he's, he's a smart man, he's intelligent and he's very respectful and calm. So we're gonna try to have this discussion and hear kind of both sides of the issue. And even the gun guys like myself, I have to look around today at society and I watch the news like everybody else and um, there's an issue, there's, there's, there's things going on. Um, and again, I, I believe that guns statistically overall are still really, really safe. But uh, part of that frenzy, if you will, I think is the media. Um, these are always horrific, tragic events. Um, and again, from a, a production standpoint and the media standpoint, if it bleeds, it leads. So I think you're getting a, a lot of publication and a lot of uh, coverage when these type things happen. First of all, they're designed to take life. That's the reason. Guns are very dangerous, I will agree with you that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think they demand respect and not fear. So that's my general purpose here is uh, you, you don't have to be afraid of guns. I own many guns. I use them just about every day. Um, they're designed to take life, so you have to respect them. But Nathan, how would you, if you had power, if you were President Nathan for the day, right? And you could do something, I, I think I've heard before where you're, you're looking for like complete gun abolishment even, right? Outlaw. Right, uh, right, yeah. Right. <clears throat> well, in a discussion like this, I suppose <clears throat> we should start, you know, where do I come from? You know, I know my father was um, totally against any kind of violence. You know, mm -hmm. he, and um, <clears throat> I grew up, you know, my early years were during the Second World War. And I remember somehow it got through to me that he was going to visit the conscientious objectors. You know, anybody who refused to use a gun, he, he was going to talk to them. He wanted to right. support them. Um, for some strange reason, we acquired this Stevenson, nice silver chrome barreled Stevenson 22, mm -hmm. right? And um, we never really got into any kind of organized gun <coughs> use, like a club or something like that. But I remember one time I took this gun, I, you know, it makes me shudder to think of it now. Here's this, you know, what, when I was 14, 15, 16 years old, walking up the street to the quarry, and <coughs> I shot at this bird flying, and I hit it. And that, you know, really affected me. No, it surprised that. you probably first of all that you hit it, right? <laughs> right, right. You're talking about the death factor, though. Right. That you took its yeah. life. Right. Well, how would that be, you know, permissible, tolerable? You know, it's something I'd want to admit to. <clears throat> and then maybe a few years later, in high school, there was this definite uh, push. I was in Everett, Pennsylvania, which is sort of a rural town, mm -hmm. much smaller than Bennington, and <clears throat> I was considering well. Gee, maybe I should join the whatever the rod and gun gun club was there. Right. And uh, or, no, I don't know how long I thought about, it, but I thought, could I shoot a deer? No, I couldn't shoot a deer. You know, deers are beautiful animals right. out there in the woods, and you know, to, agree. the idea of, of of killing one was just more than I could uh, imagine. <clears throat> and then, actually, Stevenson, twenty two, stayed in our family. I guess when the kids got little. Um, of course, we all hear about these horrific accidents where kids pull a trigger right. whenever they see it and somebody gets uh, killed. And <clears throat> I don't know why it took me so long to put two and two together. I said, we got this gun here and we got little kids in the house. Oh, got to get rid of this gun. So that away went the right. gun. Right. No, I, I felt that was a positive mood, uh, move. Um, so you know, from then on, I guess I kind of just Develop the idea that well, yeah, it seems sort of selfish. But if I don't need a gun, why does anybody need a gun? Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> then, of course, you have this whole history of um, 
you know, the gun being, you know, the, the reason for so many people dying, you know. Right. If, uh, you know, explosives weren't ever invented, right. you know, what, what kind of wars would we have had? We had still feeding sh people well, shooting arrows at each other or whatever, and it would make it much more difficult. Sure. For well, I, I think there's a couple different things there. First of all, we're talking, we are talking about taking life, right? We're talking about wartime. Mm -hmm. Which again, this this country was founded and made on guns. If you think about it from that standpoint, right? We use them to f defend our freedom. Mm -hmm. um, and hunting, obviously, I, I'm a hunter. That's what I do. I've shot lots of deer, and there's a sense of remorse even for me every time we shoot a deer. Uh -huh. That's hard for me. I, I know what I've done. This is a big. You can't give that life back. Mm -hmm. um, again, I, I think I justify that via. I, I feed my family with it, first of all, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm managing the wildlife populations, and I've got all these excuses that I can give you why it's okay for me to shoot a deer. Yeah. But again, the, the statistics we're talking about are, are gun deaths, and again, I think that's something else that the, the gun control side is very quick to point out all these gun deaths. If you guys go online and you research, you know, how many people actually died from guns, it's a hard number to find. Mm -hmm. Because all statistics can be twisted and modified for whatever. Mm -hmm. I found anywhere from you know ten or twelve thousand people up to thirty thousand people a year, and again from from huh. my from my yeah. point out of eighty two million people, even if we go with thirty thousand, yeah, it sounds horrible to say, but those are pretty good odds, right? Mm -hmm. If you compare it to gasoline or knives or doctors or all these other yeah. ways to get hurt, propane, right? We're just talking about opiate addiction. There's so many other things that are yeah. just as dangerous, if not more dangerous, than the guns. Um, the problem with, I, I agree with your concept too, that if we could back up and, and get rid of the gun, right, there would be a lot less life lost. Mm -hmm. But we can't, short of inventing a time machine. I think the mm -hmm. guns are here and there's nothing we can do about them. I think they're there and if you take them away, then just criminals are still gonna have them, mm -hmm. right? So I don't, know, uh, I don't know if that's even possible to take the, the guns mm -hmm. back from the American public. But I think it's about, again, when I say gun deaths and what I'm looking about um, is the accidental deaths, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna count criminals because criminals are gonna do it whether we allow them to or not. If we make laws, I think they're still gonna break the laws. They're criminals, that's what they do, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, death by suicide, death by uh, police officers, you know, the the, it still counts as a gun death when a, a murderer comes out of a home and, and gets shot by a cop. That's still a death. That still counts, right? Uh -huh. But in, in that example is a good example, I think, where guns actually save lives, right? So I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a proponent of the Second Amendment. I think everybody has the, the right to bear arms to defend themselves. And therefore, I, I think we should have guns. Now, having said that, I don't think everybody should have a gun. Right. Yeah. I, I think there's there's certain people. If you've you know shown that you're not responsible enough to to own one, you shouldn't have one. If you have mental health issues, you probably shouldn't have a gun. Mm -hmm. But the problem is who decides? Who decides what does that? And I'll, I'll right. give you a, a great example. One of my friends, Ted Nugent, actually just told the story the other night. Uh -huh. And there was a, a woman in New York City that you know owned a little convenience store and. She had been robbed a number of times, both by gun and, and knife point, and she got mm -hmm. sick of it. So she went to yeah. the authorities and she said, I, I want a gun, I want to defend myself. Yeah. And the authorities told her, no, you can't have one because this is New York City, you got to get a permit. Mm -hmm. So she went, now again, this woman had no criminal record, but in New York State it's very difficult. She tried to get her gun permit and she was told no, right? Mm -hmm. So rather than listen to the government, she went to one of her uncles and she purchased a gun and she kept it underneath the counter. Yeah. And again. Um, this is a, a very horrific, tragic accident, but what happened is when the next time somebody came in to rob her, and it just happened to be by knife point, she pulled out that gun and she shot him and, and killed him, killed her assailant, her attacker, uh -huh. and she was arrested. And to me, that just seems so, it, it's so funny to me that she didn't have the right, that someone else decided for her that she couldn't defend herself. And I guess, um, you know, cars now, with terrorism especially, we're using cars a lot, right? You see them in London and France, here in the US, we're driving cars oh, into people oh, yeah. to kill them. Yeah, yeah. I think people have <clears throat> killed people since the beginning of history and we're always gonna kill each other. You know, it's, it's not right, but <laughs> it's the way it is, whether it's for God or whatever the reason. Uh -huh. I think if we don't have guns, we're gonna use, you know, knives and our hands and, right? Uh, 
Cain killed Abel with a rock, right? This is basic mm -hmm. human, I don't know, badness. This is what <laughs> we do, right? So, uh -huh. so where do we, where do we go from here? I mean, I don't think people necessarily have to be trained even to own a gun. That woman in New York City defended herself successfully, right? Mm -hmm. Her life was not lost. The bad guy is the one that lost. She was trained. She wasn't trained, but she knew which end the bullets came out of, and she knew enough to defend herself and, and pull the trigger. Mm -hmm. So, in my opinion, again, that's a success story. We just had these two convicts um, that escaped from Georgia. There was a nationwide manhunt for them, right? These are oh. two guys. They killed a couple guards on the way out. They were in prison for killing people to start right. with. Right. Mm -hmm. um, thankfully, they were captured, right? How were they captured? They tried to carjack a guy who happened to be an armed American citizen. He wasn't law enforcement, he wasn't military, he was just a regular guy like me that happened to carry. Mm -hmm. Well, he was able to w w hold those people. Nobody was shot, not even the bad guys lost their lives in that thing, mm -hmm. but he, with his gun, held those people until authorities arrived and they put them back in jail. How many lives did that save? You follow? What happens if they, if they mm -hmm. kept on going? Yeah. And again, we'll never know. But mm -hmm. I think that's mm -hmm. a success story and an, an example that's used every day. I think people def use guns to defend themselves and save lives every day in America. Um, Vermont, and specifically, I mean, we have a pretty low crime rate. And I think it's yeah. because everybody shoots, right? Our men, women, and children all, all hunt, and we all have guns in the pickup truck, and, <laughs> and it's yeah. scary to be a burglar in Vermont State. If me and you were going to become burglars today, right, yeah. and we're going to decide where we're going to go, um, Massachusetts, again, is 10 minutes away from our border here, and mm -hmm. in Massachusetts, they have very, very strict gun laws, hardly any guns. Uh -huh. They still have crime in Massachusetts, they still have gun crimes, but mm -hmm. the average person cannot have a gun. So, again, if we were going to become burglars, you know, do you want to go to Massachusetts where these unarmed, helpless people are pretty much at our mercy because I'm taking a gun. I'm a bad guy. I don't care about the law. Yeah. Or do you want to stay here in Vermont, you know, where our chances of getting shot at are pretty good, right? That's uh -huh. my basic premise behind arming the public. If every mm -hmm. time somebody went to Cumberland Farms to rob them, the clerk pulled out a 38 and shot them, not too many people would rob Cumberland Farms, right? Uh -huh. And again, that's my side. And I don't want people just wildly shooting at, at people in the streets either. And it's not Wild West that I'm talking about. I'm just talking about the basic uh, human right to defend yourself. I can't imagine shooting a person. I can't. I've, I've shot a lot of animals. That's what I do. I eat them. Mm -hmm. But I cannot imagine for the life of me taking another human life. It would have to be last resort. If somebody broke into my home and I could get my kids out the back window, that's what I would do. Mm -hmm. um, but I reserve the right. <laughs> yeah. To, to defend myself if I need to. What, what do you say to all that? Uh -huh. <clears throat> well, um, the image always comes to me about the, you know, Jesus when he was being arrested mm -hmm. by the authorities there, wherever it was, uh, and one of the disciples got his sword out and he was going to defend Jesus. And Jesus said, put up your sword. Those who live by the sword die by the sword. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> your premise that uh, this is just what we do, kill each other. Yeah. No, is kind of hard for me to accept. I don't. Uh, well, I don't. I don't but in general, true. society. I mean, it's. Well, you said right? it. Well, if you look at other countries, you know, Africa, very hard unless you're a government official to have a gun. Mm -hmm. They're just whacking off each other's arms with machetes instead. They're still killing people, right? In France, they use. You know, I saw a thing on a subway where a guy had a pet baboon. Have you ever seen the teeth on a baboon? Well, he gets you in a subway and he's cornered and he basically give me your money or I'm gonna let my baboon rip your face off. You, you pay the man the money, right? So huh. I don't think the gun again is a tool, right? You drive a truck out here, Nathan, you got a, you got a spare tire? Yeah. And you hope you never need it, right? But it's nice to have if you need it. And, mm -hmm. and again, we're talking there, convenience. You can walk to work if you had to, right? Yep. But for a matter of convenience, you have that tool to use if you need it. Um, same thing, if we're gonna talk life and death, how about a fire extinguisher? You got a fire extinguisher in your home and we hope we never use them, right? Mm -hmm. But if we had to, I'm glad I got a fire extinguisher and that's how I feel about a gun too. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, well that assumes that everybody's sort of trained in using a gun mm -hmm. and you know, you spoke of this <clears throat> person in the shop who pulled the gun out and she knew how to pull the trigger, I guess, and kill the guy who was mm -hmm. going to a coaster, but 
Um, that could have went wrong. Yeah. No, you you say there's a problem about deciding. Well, not everyone could have. Everybody can have a gun. How how do we decide you know, yeah. who should have a gun? Uh, <clears throat> and the idea that <clears throat> uh, somehow life will be more pleasant <laughs> if everybody walks around with a gun in their holster, yeah. because that's the way they're going to keep themselves from getting killed. Which, of course, brings us into another realm. You can't be afraid to die. Yeah, it's common whether we like it or not, right? One way or another. Right. There's a, an extent to which, if you know, it gets very foolish to try to keep yourself from dying. Mm -hmm. right? And <clears throat> uh, there was some um, no, religious man who, I guess, I don't know, Alexander the Great or Genghis Khan or somebody was coming through, and um, the attacker said, you know, I could kill you. And the man said, you know, I can let you kill me. So uh, there's really no... Um, well, I, I, but you, you don't have a death wish, right? You don't want to die, right? I'm assuming. So what do you do in that situation? What do you do if you're at home tonight and a home invasion happens and somebody comes in your home? What do you do if you're walking down the street and a, a car with a terrorist wipes out, you know, 10 of your friends that you're walking with, or what do you do in that well, situation? Do you well, just... I couldn't do anything, right? <laughs> well, <clears throat> I don't know. I guess that's what I'm getting at. Do you, do you just cower and accept that this criminal is going to take your life? And maybe even cower is not the right... Well, that's what Jesus I, did. You would hunt. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's, see, yeah. I, I, I want to defend myself. I want to defend my loved ones. I want to defend other people. If I see that happening, and again, I, I've been trained, right? I know how to shoot. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I would feel res a responsibility to do, I think, the right thing and stop that bad guy. I'm not a law enforcement, but that's what law enforcement does, right? When mm -hmm. they, you know, the, the Congress that just got shot up there on the baseball field, mm -hmm. right? They were saying, you know, thank God that we had the security here to defend us. Well, what happens if they're not there? What happens? I'm not a congressman. I don't have a security team that follows me around the world, right? And even when something does go down and I call for help, there's a certain amount of time, especially in Vermont. I mean, some of these people, we live in rural areas, right? So you call 911, there's somebody breaking in my house. By the time help arrives, it's, it's probably too late, right? I mean, this is, we're talking about a, a spur of the moment, trying to defend yourself. So, I mean, how do you, you just talk your way out and hope for the best? Is that the, the plan if, if you're well, in that, that situation? Well, some, that sometimes happens successfully. Yeah, and it does, yeah. I suppose, and obviously, <clears throat> the <clears throat> challenge we have in society generally is to reduce the number of people who would do that. Right, right. right. There's just a lot of people that we overlook simply because we don't love them enough. Now, we know that a lot of uh, criminals you know, just never had anybody in their background right. who they felt was supporting them enough. So we need to have a society mm -hmm. where people are much more prone to compliment each other, to love each other, to hug each other, to you know, make sure that the other person is you know, living a life that's um, fulfilling, rewarding, yeah. safe. Respect you know, is what you're talking about. Basic respect yeah. for each other. And I agree, that would be fantastic in a dream world, right? The real world is not not set up that way. Everybody I know, most people are good people, right? And yeah. it doesn't matter about the United States or where I travel in the world, people are people and most of us want to work and we're proud of our work and we want to support our families mm -hmm. and live and be happy and we don't ever want to shoot anybody or ever get shot. That's right. your average person, right? But there's a certain demographic of people that don't go by those rules. So we just get guns and bump them off? Well, n n not necessarily. I mean, I think it's it's a process. I think if you're defending yourself, you have the right to do that, right? I mean, why do they have the right to take my life unjustly? Don't I have the, and that's where I'm, you know, the, the problem, I think there should be restrictions on getting guns. I think especially if it's a gun related crime, you shouldn't be allowed. But that's, that's my answer. My answer to gun control and reducing gun deaths, first of all, are education, right? People say I'm crazy when I tell them that I let my kids play with guns at six and seven years old, and I do. 
because the first time my kids look at the gun cabinet and say, hey dad, what's that? I don't want there to be a mystery. It's like the, the mm -hmm. cookie jar. Don't get in the cookie jar as soon as you turn around, what's the kids doing, right? So when my kids ask me, I, I take the gun out. And again, it's mm -hmm. controlled, it's not loaded. We play with them. I tell them everything about it, how dangerous it is, but we show them, I take the mystery out of that gun. Mm -hmm. And later in life, we go through hunter education, we explain all the basics, and mm -hmm. basic gun safety is something that I think needs to happen everywhere. It's like not talking to your kids about guns because you don't think they're gonna have contact with one is absurd to me in today's day and age. It's like not talking to your kids about drugs because your kid's not gonna do drugs. That's foolish. In today's society, your kids are gonna have contact with drugs somewhere, and they're probably gonna have contacts with a gun somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I would rather have them learn from a professional mm -hmm. than Joe gangbanger on the street, right? So if I was gonna do something about gun control, my first step would be establishing hunter education as standard curriculum in every school in America. I want kids to know the history of U.S. Fish and Wildlife, and I want to know how to at least handle a gun. And I'm not talking about hunting or using a gun, or you don't have to own a gun, or you don't have any of that. Mm -hmm. You have to understand the basic concept and, and what to do with it. And then the follow-up to that is, I do think that there's good gun control laws that are in place now, and we should mm -hmm. uphold those, but we should enforce them with diligence. I think if you are convicted of a gun crime specifically, then we should make an example of you. We should, if we want to reduce gun deaths, we want to show that this is what happens if you use a gun improperly, especially if you take a life. What happens, I think, a lot in society that I see is we've got these people that they're just continuously doing the same thing. We, we get them for something, we put them in jail for a serious crime, and then because we feel sorry for them, because he had a rough childhood and because he did this, we go easy on these people. You know, mm -hmm. we, we catch a kid with a, a half a pound of marijuana and we put him in, in jail for 20 years, but yet the guy that shot two people is only getting 15. That makes no sense to me. I wanna, um, again, if, if you're a convicted felon, especially if it's a violent offense, I think that's good. Mm -hmm. that you shouldn't, if you're mentally ill, I, I don't think you should have a gun. But how do you screen for that? How do you pre-screen Another concern I have right now is the mentally ill, mm -hmm. right? The mentally ill, if you hear and listen to TV, we talk about that a lot, right? How do we keep hands, uh, guns out of the hands of the mentally ill? Mm -hmm. And the problem is that's something I think that doesn't happen instantly. I can be perfectly sane today. I go home tonight and, and find my wife in bed with another man and I slip or whatever causes me to, to slip mm -hmm. and then I'm insane and I show up at work and I shoot everybody, right? I think that's majority of times how it happens. When I watch the news, mm -hmm. this guy, the shooter, uh, was legal when he got his gun. Mm -hmm. Now he's definitely not sane, right? Yeah. <laughs> definitely not. So how do you screen for that? And my fear is, uh, who sets that limit? Have you ever been, have you ever seen a psychiatrist? Have you ever taken antidepressant medicine? Have you ever, I mean, I could name a whole bunch of things. How about military, right? If we're gonna look at, a group of designated people who's the most likely to flip out, if you will, mm -hmm. the military, right? Yeah. PTSD is rampant, this, mm -hmm. is, this is what happens. So now, is, should we be doing that? Should we take our soldiers that we give guns and train and go over there and they <laughs> risk their lives and take lives, but now when they come back to the U.S., should we take their guns away? Well, you, know, you, you present the problem. Yeah. You know, there's no, at least I don't see any clear way how to, how to decide yes. or how to call out the people who shouldn't have guns. And as you say, if you go home and you see somebody sleeping with your wife and you flip out, you know, this can happen to almost anybody at any, any time. You know, right, right. You get your, your button, buttons pushed and you're not in a good, good right. position to handle it. M M so what you have to do is have people <clears throat> you know, in some kind of relationships with other people so that they're constantly uh, aware that their first responsibility is to make sure that other people are in good, good situation. You know, this is you know, the ultimate not selfish attitude that we need to develop. Mm -hmm. you know, as, long as, some, some, as, as, as long as I start thinking that uh, I'm better than somebody else for whatever reason, right. then things start falling apart. 
Well, and obviously the, a, a person in that situation is probably not thinking clearly. The best thing to do is, is what I do, I leave. If I get mad at a woman or anything, I just walk away, cool down, and then we come back and talk about it. But these, yeah. obviously the cases where, you know, these tragedies happen, people aren't, aren't that adept. They're instantly jumping and they probably regret it. If you ask them later, I was mad right. and I just, you know, I flipped out, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you, uh, I mean, how do we reduce that in that same situation, even if I don't have a, a gun, I'm gonna grab the lamp and beat the guy to death with it, or I'm gonna... That happens so seldom, you know. Well, the gun is much easier to... No. Well, so it's the ease part, it's yeah. the convenience. And I have to say, you're, you're right. I mean, mm -hmm. I can't argue with that. It's a whole mm -hmm. lot easier to kill somebody with a gun than it would be to, to stab them or ch strangle them or you know the millions of other ways yeah, right. that we can we can kill somebody. But I don't know the uh, I don't know the answer. I mean mm -hmm. the the ironic part here is we both want the same thing. We'd like to see less gun violence yeah. and, and some of these tragedies, you know, r reduced mm -hmm. somehow. And again, I think I think the answer is education and then follow through with criminal charges for the people who, who break the law. Um, I don't know how, I don't know how it would work if you, and again, what, what's your theory behind that? If we just, if we rounded up the guns and we made it illegal, you, you think that would reduce it? Well, what's the incidence of gun violence in Japan or England or these other countries right. where guns are, well, I don't know whether they're restricted from citizens' use. Yeah or uh, whether it's just I can, part of the culture. I don't know the exact numbers. Again, this is an open floor discussion. We didn't bring any any you know evidence, any documentation or stats well, or anybody anything we're, we're, we're talking. <laughs> well, and again, it depends on, on who you're talking to. But I think the Australia, I'll use Australia as an example. They, mm -hmm. they outlawed guns in Australia. The government went around and they collected them, cost them billions and billions of dollars to do that. Mm -hmm. The death rate, the murder rate skyrocketed. And that happens, again, that's another historical database that I, I have to look at when I look at gun control. And history, whenever a country has come and established gun control, usually within a year or two, it's quickly followed up by rounding up a large group of helpless people who can't defend themselves and executing them. Gun control worked great for the Nazis, right? I can go through Germany or Uganda, or I can name country after country in history. And whenever we've done that, whenever we've said, you guys can't defend yourselves, it, it just opens them up for the, the bad guys, for somebody to come in and, and slaughter them, which I'm not for either. Again, this is an, an open discussion for everybody. I think people need to talk about this. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I, I think it's healthy and I think there's compromise here. I don't think I'm 100% right. I learn from you and I'm interested mm -hmm. in what you have to say and hopefully people are learning from me and can listen to um, guns in the hands of honest you know citizens I think save and protect lives and make make the world a better place but I can see your side too there's too many gun deaths and we got to do something <clears throat> yeah if we broaden this out to the international atomic bomb I mean you know nuclear scene right you say well you know, everybody should have a chance to, you know, should have a gun to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. So why are we so concerned about North Korea you know, right. having nuclear weapons or Iran or whoever else does? It's a trust factor. Yeah. We don't trust North Korea. Just mm -hmm. like it's hard to trust your neighbor if he's got a gun, right? Mm -hmm. I, I think, I think that's the, you know, that's the funny part. I've, uh, you know, I've got a gun and I don't shoot anybody and mm -hmm. nobody shoots at me because I got a gun. See how that kind of balances out. I well, think <laughs> that begs the question about has how many people with guns get shot? Well, lots of them. You know? yeah, uh, yeah, no, that's absolutely true too. There's, there's, we'll never be able to protect ourselves from ourselves. As horrible as that is, mm -hmm. there's always going to be accidents. There's always going to be fatalities. There's always going to be criminals and bad guys in this world. Mm -hmm. And, and again. I'm thankful that law enforcement and the good guys have guns. Yeah. I consider myself a good guy and I want to be one. That's another thing I find interesting with a lot of the gun control uh, proponents is they don't want anybody else to have a gun until it gets to them and then they want the gun or they want their security team to have a gun, right? Mm -hmm. So they don't want you to defend yourself but it's okay to take them away until it gets to them. And then, well, wait a minute, I really want to, you, you're the exception. You don't want one, you don't need one, and you're happy with that, right? And I'm happy with your, your, right. your right to do that. No, the only 
really the only thing I can do about this problem mm -hmm. is to not have a gun. You know, I, that's my decision. I'm, I'm not trying to force my decision on somebody else. Right. You know, but my perception of the way to solve the problem is to just not touch them. Gotcha. Yeah. And hats off to you, Nathan. I can honestly say you'll never shoot anybody. Mm -hmm. You will not be responsible for a gun death, right? <laughs> Hopefully I won't either. Mm -hmm. But I, I do have the ability, and like I said, I, I can't imagine, but I reserve the right. to. Def I don't need a piece of paper. I don't need a conceal carry permit to tell me I have the right to defend myself. Yeah. Right? I think that's a basic human right. And uh, like I said, I hope I never have to do it, but mm -hmm. if I have to, I, I would. Yeah, I always had a little trouble with this Second Amendment thing. Uh, I'm not sure what the founding fathers were thinking, but for people to say, well, I've got to have my gun because, you know, if my government becomes overbearing or um, irresponsible, then I have to be able to, well, you know, we've had all these you know, little skirmishes where, mm -hmm. you know, somebody's offending the government, and the government just goes in and wipes them out. Right. Uh, an idea that we could defend could, ourselves if we wanted to? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's well, total, I, I total think, foolishness. I, know. I get it. I think that's exactly why the Second Amendment was was put into place, to be honest. I think uh -huh. they were very, our forefathers were wise men, but they were very oppressed men at the same time. Yeah. They saw the evil head of government when it reared up, mm -hmm. and they wanted to defend themselves again. And I think that is exactly why the Second Amendment was written, so the people could stay in charge of the government and not the other way around. Yeah. Um, with technology and the way things are, we would have a hell of a, a fight. But honestly, if that's what it took, if we were that fed up with our government, that's the only way to change it. It's going to be a large group of armed men that walked on Capitol Hill and took over our government and did it different, just like we did it the first time. Well, right? you know, one might, I might disagree with that. Yeah. And, you know, the idea that that could happen is, is you know. Almost preposterous anyway. Right, right. And then you have to begin to wonder whether <clears throat> thinking that you have that backup protection mm -hmm. may somehow blunt your ability to think of ways to negotiate. Right. No. So we have this difference. That's well, you know, okay, we get to a stalemate. What do I do? Yeah. Do I shoot the other guy or do we keep on hammering Working away up. at our difference until we can come to some, you know, Happy resolution. Very, very valid agreement uh, argument there. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't disagree with that. I do, and that's the yeah. fear too. Is you know, me and you get over, get fighting over something stupid, right? And I, mm -hmm. you know, lose my for a minute, and I shoot you over, mm -hmm. you know, cards or something foolish. Yeah, it happens every that, day. That's that's the fear. And again, if I'm going to go back to the statistics, statistically, mm -hmm. it really doesn't happen that often. Statistically, it's it's rare. Uh, one I love to use yeah. is doctors, right? Uh -huh. You're about 75% more likely to be killed by your doctor, medical malpractice, than you are a gun, right? Mm -hmm. I'm talking death, not maimed or crippled or all the other things, yeah. to die at the trusted hand of your doctor. Not everybody has a gun, but everybody has at least one doctor, right? And am I saying outlaw doctors or banned doctors? Absolutely not, because doctors do awesome work. We need them. Mm -hmm. the, that's the trade-off. They save enough lives so that it's worth the few that they kill. And again, doctors are gonna hate me for this. I'm sorry, that's <laughs> not my intention, but it's, it's my argument, it's, uh -huh. it's my, my point. I think guns save enough lives to justify the awful amount of deaths that we're having. Uh -huh. um, but I, I still, I would like to see it less. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'd like to see guns have a little more, uh, I'd like to have people have more control over themselves. All right, everybody, I want to thank you guys again for tuning in. Thanks, Nathan, for, for showing up. Thanks for and again, if you're, if you're gun owners, keep them in a the holster unless you have to. Uh, but again, I think you have the right to defend yourself. Tune in, we'll have another discussion soon. Thanks.